Hello, my name is Paul Hendricks and I'm a Solutions Architect with NVIDIA. This tutorial is a part of a series of tutorials on RAPIDS, an open source ecosystem NVIDIA has developed to GPU accelerate data science and machine learning. In this tutorial, we'll br briefly walk through how to use XGBoost in RAPIDS. Here, I've allocated myself an NVIDIA DGX1 server using an SSH terminal. This system contains eight GPUs, each a Tesla V100 with 32 gigabytes of GPU memory. Next, we need to create an environment in which we can run Rapids. We can build this environment from scratch, or we can pull down a previously built environment using Docker and NGC. NGC is a hub for optimized software like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Rapids, and more. Data scientists can pull down Docker containers to get up and started quickly without having to build and compile from source. The last thing we'll do after building an environment is to start a Jupyter Notebook session that we can interact with via an internet browser. This notebook shows how to use XGBoost in Rapids on a single GPU. This notebook has been executed ahead of time since several of the data creation and migration steps take a couple of minutes to run. We've included the timings for those steps so you can get a feel for how long those steps take. And we hope that you see the value of the Rapids ecosystem and how quickly you can iterate on your data and models. There are three families of algorithms in machine learning. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. We'll focus on supervised learning algorithms and one of the most commonly used algorithms in that family, XGBoost. Supervised learning algorithms take as input information, also called features, and correlates these features to targets, also called labels. For example, we might be interested in predicting if an individual likes a certain computer game. We can collect information such as age, gender, occupation, and other information about that individual as well as their preference for that particular computer game. We can pass this individual's information and preference into our supervised learning algorithm and the algorithm will parse the information and learn how to predict that individual's computer game preference. XGBoost is a supervised learning algorithm that uses decision trees. Decision trees are useful representations as a model because we can follow each branch or decision rule of the tree and ultimately get a prediction score. To identify the best decision tree, XGBoost looks through all the features that we pass in and identifies splits at each branch. Typically, computer games appeal to a younger generation. XGBoost will pick up on this pattern and create a split. XGBoost doesn't just use one tree. It builds multiple trees, each with different splits in the data. These multiple trees are combined or ensembled together to create predictions. For a certain individual, we can follow the decision rule of each tree until we get a prediction score and then sum those prediction scores together to get an ultimate prediction. With a better understanding of XGBoost, let's get started with a practical application. First, we'll load NumPy, Pandas, and XGBoost. These are all available as open source. In this notebook, there's two ways of working with data. You can load data or you can simulate it. Next, we'll load some data that we've simulated beforehand. We use the make classification function from the scikit-learn library to simulate the data. This function creates a feature set of 10 million rows by 100 columns, as well as a target column of 10 million rows consisting of two classes, zero and one. The make classification function contains information that we can use to predict the class of the target column. A traditional data science workflow involves training an algorithm on a set of data and then evaluating that trained algorithm on a data set that has been held out, typically called the validation data set. Evaluating the trained algorithm on the validation data set gives us an idea or intuition on how that algorithm will generalize to data in the wild, to data that's never seen before. So in a way, we're using the validation data set to validate the algorithm. We'll split our data into training and validation sets. We'll use 80% of our data for training and 20% of our data for validation. Next, we can check the dimensions of our data to confirm that our data has been successfully created and that each training and validation data set has the correct proportions. We see here that the training set has about 8 million rows by 100 columns and that the validation data set has about 2 million rows by 100 columns. And we see that the proportion of the training to validation 
data set is about 80% to 20%. Currently, our data lives in NumPy arrays. We'll need to convert them to a format that XGBoost can work with. We can convert our data to a dmatrix format by using the xgb.dmatrix function and pass in both the features as well as the labels for our training and validation data sets. Next, we will set the parameters of the XGBoost model. When working with GPU Accelerated XGBoost, there are a couple key parameters to pay attention to. The first is the parameter tree method. This parameter dictates what algorithm should be used to build the tree. We'll set this to the value GPU hist to use the histogram method that is GPU accelerated. When working with large data sets regardless of CPU and GPU, the histogram method provides near identical results to the exact method, but is significantly faster. Additionally, we'll specify the ngPU's parameter to take a value of 1. This will allow us to use one GPU. Lastly, we can set parameters around how deep each tree should be, how to grow each tree, and the objective functions to be optimized. Since we're performing a classification task, we will specify that our eval metric parameter to be AUC, area under the curve, and that the objective function to be optimized should be the binary logistic function. With our parameters set, it's now time to train the model. We'll build 100 trees using our data set of 8 million rows and 100 columns. Our model took about 60 seconds to process 8 million rows by 100 columns of data. This is pretty impressive. Rapids and NVIDIA GPUs makes it very easy to quickly iterate and try out many different features and hyperparameters, resulting in the most optimal model, which then translates into more successful business outcomes. We can iterate over different hyperparameters very quickly. For example, we built the above XGBoost model using max depth with a value of 12. This is a fairly deep tree model, where each tree is allowed to grow up to 12 nodes deep, and our validation AOC ended up at 99.48%. Deeper trees can sometimes perform better than shallow trees since they have the ability to learn from more data. However, this often comes at the risk of overfitting the model to our training data. The resulting overfit model would not generalize as well as to new data. We can quickly test this hypothesis by changing our max depth value from 12 to 6 and rebuild our model. This is the value of Rapids and NVIDIA GPUs. We can quickly iterate and try new features, remove features, tune hyperparameters. Each new model to train for our 10 million rows by about 100 columns will take about 40 to 60 seconds on a single GPU. After our model has trained, we see that our model performance on the validation dataset decreased by about 0.08 percentage points. This tells us that the deeper trees result in a slightly, very slightly more performant model. And we can test other values for max depth or tune other hyper hyperparameters and iterate quickly to create the most optimal model, which will then translate into more successful business outcomes. In conclusion, Rapids accelerates data scientists and makes it easy to work with large data sets and iterate quickly. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks.